to our friends in Europe, Russia, the Middle East, and Africa. Welcome to an evening of inspiration and possibility with the IFOPA. I'm Michelle Davis, Executive Director of the IFOPA. Since our founding in 1988, the IFOPA has offered support, connection, and advocacy to individuals living with FOP and their families while pursuing a single mission, funding research to find treatments and a cure for FOP. This year, we celebrate 30 years of funding research at the University of Pennsylvania Center for Research in FOP and Related Disorders. Research that has been made possible by the dedication and generosity of our amazing FOP community. Currently, there are no treatments for this disabling condition, which is caused by a single faulty gene that makes bone grow where it shouldn't throughout the body, in muscles, and other soft tissue. A diagnosis of FOP means constant worry about when the next flare will happen and what new limitations will result from it. Research, including clinical studies and trials, has brought us closer than ever to finding treatments that can hopefully slow the progression or stop the bone growth completely. But we know that for individuals living with FOP and their families, a treatment isn't enough. That's why I'm so excited about the IFOPA's bold new campaign called In Pursuit of a Cure. This campaign will fund transformative research, including new Act for FOP drug development research grant and the IFOPA's first ever research grant in gene therapy. This first grant has been awarded to the University of Massachusetts. Gene therapy doesn't replace drug development or current and future clinical trials. But if successful, gene therapy has the potential to cure FOP by targeting the source of the disease, the FOP gene. The IFOPA is committed to pursuing every path that could lead toward treatments and a cure, and we will leave no stone unturned for our FOP family. The co-chairs of this campaign are two FOP families, the Wallaces and the Ottos, who both know all too well the anguish that comes with an FOP diagnosis. You'll be hearing both of these families' stories and learning more about the In Pursuit of a Cure campaign tonight. But first, I would like for you to meet some of my friends who live with FOP. My name is Kate. I was diagnosed with FOP at two years old. I'm Addie, and I was diagnosed with FOP when I was one. I'm Daniel, and I was diagnosed with FOP when I was six. I'm Ella, and I was diagnosed with FOP when I was four. I am Haley, and I was diagnosed with FOP when I was five. My name is Joseph, and I was diagnosed with FOP when I was four. I'm Raina, I was diagnosed with FOP when I was four. My name is Havana, and I was diagnosed with FOP when I was three. I'm Lincoln. I was diagnosed with FOP at two years old. I'm Maria, and I was diagnosed with FOP when I was 15 months old. I'm Oliver, and I was diagnosed with FOP when I was 13 months old. I'm Phantom, and I was diagnosed with FOP when I was seven months old. My name is Eli Wallace, and I am 11 years old. I like to be like very active and do stuff. I like basketball, football, baseball. Eli's a really cool kid. There's just something really special about him. He just has a huge heart. He loves his critters, he loves his dog and his cats, and his family, his friends. He's a nice guy, he's a good brother, and yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. Something that I wish I could do was being able to play like football or like basketball without having to be worried of getting hurt. I was diagnosed with FOP when I was seven years old. We had a bike crash. Eli, Finn, and I were riding around the lake, and they crashed into each other. And the very next day, there was like a, a lump on his back. And that was really the beginning of a really long uh, healthcare journey of you know, seeing uh, oncologists and seeing orthopedists, and actually a sports medicine doctor. He came back and was like, well, it could be this thing, and don't Google it. Of course, we went home and we Googled it. The first thing that I saw was the IFOPA webpage and the picture of little kid feet with the classic FOP toes that Eli has to a T. And it was just like, a, it was like a punch in the stomach. 
and we saw the hairy Eflak skeleton and the mountains of bone all over him. And then it really just went into parent mode. You know, my kid needs the best medical treatment there is, and that was at UPenn, so we booked plane tickets and there we were. The hardest part for me about FOP is when I found out that I couldn't play like contact sports and have fun with stuff like that and it just made me kind of frustrated. It's totally unfair that he has FOP. He can't do the things other people can do, but he definitely makes the most of it. As a parent to a child with a condition where there are no treatments and there are no cures, it's easy to feel like there's nothing you can do. Having hope is like the thing that gets us by all the time, you know. The P in FOP is progressive. While he is rather mildly affected now, not knowing how long that's going to be, I think that's hard for everybody. Eli can still raise his arms up in the air, which a lot of people with FOP can't. And he still sleeps like that sometimes, like a little baby with his arms over his head. I don't want to think about it, but sometime that could be the last time. To not be able to see into the future and, and see what exactly your son's quality of life looks like. That's why causes like this are so important. The scientists that are working on FOP right now, I had hope. I like hope that they would that they would like find a cure or like a thing. And so then most likely I can maybe start playing like football again. I feel like the long play in FOP is to fix the mutation so no more bone forms. Is it possible? I'd like to believe so. But it'll be a long road. None of these things happen overnight when it comes to drug development. There's no number of things that are too many to try. Like, anything that we can dream up, we should be going after. Someday when other parents get the news that their child has FOP, and they're shocked, and they're devastated, it will be amazing to be able to tell them that there's a way to stop him. So we just, we just have to try. Hello, I'm Rebecca Wallace. And I'm Kyle Wallace. And with Rory and Eric Otto, we are honored to be co-chairing the In Pursuit of a Cure campaign. Now that you've seen our family's story, you can understand why we're so passionate about funding research to find treatments and a cure for FOP. And we know we're not alone. For many years, the IFOPA has supported research that has brought us closer to treatments for FOP. And none of that incredible progress the identification of the FOP gene or the development of potential treatments would have been possible without the passion and dedication of our FOP community. We've come so far, but we still have far to go. And together, we are going to expand that research even more with the In Pursuit of a Cure campaign. Our goal is to raise at least $250,000. Because we must pursue every avenue of research, the In Pursuit of a Cure campaign will fund new Act for FOP grants and the IFOPA's first ever targeted research grant in gene therapy. You will be learning much more about gene therapy through this presentation. But first, IFOPA Research Committee member Kyle Brinkman is going to tell you about the Act for FOP grant program. Hi, I'm Kyle Brinkman. In 2015, our family, the Brinkmans and Madons, came together with our friends and supporters in honor of our daughter, Sona. Sona was diagnosed with FOP at age five. Our goal was to help the IFOPA start a competitive research grant program focused on the development of safe, transformational FOP drug treatments. Over the last several years, others who are passionate about developing treatments for FOP have joined with us to help fund this critical research program. In just five years, through our combined efforts, the IFOPA has been able to provide more than $1 million to fund 18 research grants at 14 institutions around the world. As a result of the ACT for FOP program, there are currently nine new drugs being studied as potential treatments for FOP. And interest in FOP research continues to grow around the world. In 2020, nine new proposals were submitted by researchers. Applications for these competitive one-year grants are reviewed and evaluated by the Act for FOP Scientific Advisory Board. Each year, the IFOPA funds three to four grants, depending on the amount of funding that has been raised each year. 
Our family is so pleased by the way the community has rallied around this competitive grant program and is excited about the collaborations and progress that have been made in developing new drug treatments for FOP. We're pleased for you to learn more about a grant given in 2016 to Drs. Paul Yu and Dong Dong Sha at Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. You'll also learn how it provided important information that was then used by investigators in developing the STOP FOP clinical trial, a phase two trial in Europe. Hello, my name is Adam Sherman and I'm the research director at the IFOPA. The ACT for FOP grant program, which stands for Accelerating Cures and Treatments, has propelled and expanded FOP research around the world. To help you better understand the impact that this grant program has had on FOP, we've invited three scientists to share more about their meaningful research, which resulted from the ACT for FOP grant. I'm excited to introduce Dr. Paul Yu from Harvard's Brigham and Women Hospital here in Boston, Massachusetts, as well as Drs. Marilisa Eckhoff and Bernard Smild from Amsterdam University Medical Center from the Netherlands. Paul, can you talk about the impact that the Act for FOP grant has had on your research in FOP? The Act for FOP grant program allowed us to take a promising idea uh, that there was a, an existing um, experimental drug that might be useful for FOP and develop the uh, animal model data that would give us the confidence to propose a clinical trial. This concept um, that sericatinib, which was an experimental drug that had been tested in uh, several hundred volunteers for different cancer um, uh, indications, uh, was, was an idea that came from Alex Bullock's group at Oxford. We uh, started discussing how you might take that previous experience with this drug, sericatinib, and design a clinical trial uh, for the prevention of heterotopic ossification in patients. And that's when we started talking with uh, clinical experts in this disease, like Marilisa's group in the Netherlands. And Marilisa, it's often difficult in drug development to take uh, research that's developed at the bench or studied at the bench and then pursue that all the way through clinical trials in humans. Can you talk a little bit about what your team did in order to take these research results and then bridge this to a clinical trial in FOP? This exciting results from Paul and Alex, uh, a, a drug that could be reused and then could have a very effective um, result in FOP patients. It, it was a great adventure uh, to bring it to the phase two trial. But first of all, we had to find funding. And now we are setting up a phase two trial to look at this drug. This has already been tested so well by Paul and Alex. And we are looking forward to the results of this drug. And we really hope and think that it might work very well in FOP patients. Thank you, Marilisa. Uh, Bernard, as one of the lead investigators in, in this clinical trial, what are you hoping that you can accomplish with the stop pop clinical trial? Was the, the 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 end purpose of of any clinical trial that's investigating drugs in any in in a disease is is to find um, effective uh, and safe way to treat patients with that disease. In three clinical sites in Europe, uh, we are currently starting the stop pop trial, which stands for the sarcatinib trial to prevent FOP. So what we're hoping to find is um, that this drug that we know from other trials that should be safe for use also in the long term, and that it's also effective for patients with FOP. So we can stop uh, their disease activity uh, and make sure that they, uh, the mobility that they have, the quality of life that they have, uh, stays stable at the very least. So thank you all for helping us understand the impact of the Act for FOP grant program uh, you've really demonstrated how a grant funded through the IFOPA has resulted in a clinical trial to uh, investigate a potential medicine for FOP. The In Pursuit of a Cure campaign will help fund new and innovative grants through the Act for FOP program and will help energize FOP research around the world. Thank you, Adam. In addition to new Act for FOP grants, 
In Pursuit of a Cure will fund the first ever targeted research grant to study gene therapy. Gene therapy can be a path to a cure because it goes to the source of FOP, potentially silencing the FOP gene or replacing it with a healthy copy. To be sure, this research will take time. Development from early stage research to approval can take a decade or more. And there's no promise that it will work. But even when research fails, those failures will lead to new and potentially more rewarding paths. I believe one of the most exciting things about gene therapy is the potential to bring a true sense of freedom and control for those living with conditions such as FOP. While we still have a long way to go, gene therapy is our way to fully live up to the mission of the IFOPA. Today, I'm excited to introduce Dr. Guangfeng Gao, who's director of the Hooray Gene Therapy Center at the University of Massachusetts Medical Center and is the former president of the American Society for Gene and Cell Therapy. Welcome, Dr. Gao. Thank you, Ellen, for your kind introduction. Dr. Gao, I don't wanna age you, but you've been involved in gene therapy really since the field started to take off. Can you talk a little bit about how the gene therapy field has evolved over say the past three to five years? Yes, in the past five, three to five years, there are several important things happening. It's the most important one, there are some uh, proof of concept, uh, clinical proof of concept uh, studies uh, where data uh, published and made to the public showing the successful uh, gene therapy experience uh, for different diseases, including many uh, rare diseases. So that kind of become a driver uh, or pillar for, for the gene therapy field that more uh, investors jumping and more uh, scientific research being done and more clinical trials uh, come up. So that's the most important driver for the field. But at the same time, the technology platform for gene delivery has become uh, more and more matured and people understand more how to efficiently, safely deliver genes into, the pa into patients to treat the disease, use gene therapy as a drug or you can do ex vivo gene therapy where you take out human cells, genetically modified, and put it back to human uh, as uh, a living drug in your body. So in the both fronts, gene therapy field has made substantial progress. And that brings me really to our next question. At, at the IFOPA, we try to balance when is the optimal time to start our investments in gene therapy for FOP. So yeah. what makes now the right moment to begin FOP gene therapy research? Adam, thank you for that great question. So if you think about the gene therapy as a concept, as a field, actually it has been more than half, uh, more than five decades. And but if you think about the gene therapy as a human trial, it has started since uh, early 90s. So through this 30 years, we have learned so much about gene therapy and, and continue make success uh, in developing gene therapy as a drug for human disease uh, treatment. Particularly in the past three, five years, I, I think uh, uh, we have a several gene therapy drug got approved by FDA and uh, 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 European medical agency. And this kind of uh, accomplishment really sets the field in the right stage and right time to start fly. Uh, to continue to develop uh, uh, more drugs, apply gene therapy for more diseases. So, so that kind of uh, uh, provide uh, our collaboration uh, to start at right time and, and the right place because uh, UMass is it's really a, a one of the gene therapy hubs in the world. Thank you, Dr. Gao. Uh, I could just say on behalf of the IFOPA and the community, we're so excited to have this collaboration with you and the investigators at the University of Massachusetts. We really look forward uh, to following your research and your successes uh, in the future. So thank you. Thank you. We are as excited as you because <clears throat> this is like more than, like more than 7,000 rare diseases and FOP is definitely one of them. And it's one of the probably among the most challenging uh, disease. So we uh, very much appreciate IFOP Association gave us this opportunity uh, to collaborate 
and to explore uh, the gene therapy for FOP together. My name is AJ and I am nine years old. The things I want people to know about me are that I can't do normal stuff like them, I can't run around like them, I can't play games like them, I can't play sports like them, I can't do a lot of stuff like them because I have FOP. When AJ was diagnosed, he was unaffected for the first three years. We had had a barbecue in our backyard and it, they were playing squeeze the lemon on the slide and AJ came down and how he fell off the slide for squeeze the lemon was enough to wake the FOP beast up. And within four weeks, he lost his back, his shoulders and his neck. The games I wish I could play was football and hockey. It kind of feels unfair for me that I can't play some games. I think it's extremely hard. I think as he gets older, it's even harder. You know, he realizes now what he's missing. The only thing that makes me happy is because I can just play games online. Having those games makes me feel like I'm included and I can play them without playing. Do a little bit more. To not be able to help your child and to not be able to have a medicine or have any type of treatment to help them is huge. You know, you start to feel hopeless. I wish someday we can have a cure for FOP. Okay, what I mean for us is we'll be able to run, we're able to get ourselves dressed, it's gonna be easier for brushing our teeth. I think a cure for us would change our lives. We've had amazing stakeholders and donors and families who have spent years and years fundraising to get to this point, to get to where we are for gene therapy and for pharmaceutical companies to be involved and to be working on medicine. We're a rare disease that doesn't happen and it's happening for us and that's huge. It's huge. The reason why people should give the money to the IFOPA so we can do it to the researchers is so we can have a cure for FOP and we can do everything that they can do. Hello, I'm Betsy Bogard. I chair the IFOPA's research committee. I have a little brother, Judd, who lives with FOP in Southern California. I also work in biotechnology in gene therapy development for other diseases. My dad was on the first IFOPA board when the organization founded back in 1988, and my family has been connected to the organization since then. It is an incredible privilege to be part of a community that has come as far as we have. And we are so excited to be embarking on gene therapy research for FOP. The IFOPA has awarded this first gene therapy research grant program to the University of Massachusetts. You already heard from Dr. Guanping Gao, and I have the pleasure now of introducing you to Dr. Jay Shim, who works with Dr. Gao and is leading the research at the University of Massachusetts. A consortium of gene therapy experts and FOP specialists will collaborate to help guide this FOP gene therapy research. In addition to Dr. Shim, we have two members of the consortium with us, Dr. Eileen Shore from the University of Pennsylvania and Dr. Ben Levy from the University of Texas Southwestern. Dr. Shim, we know you and the team at UMass have many years of experience in gene therapy. How will you bring what you know about gene therapy and muscle biology together in your FOP gene therapy research? Uh, first of all, it is our great pleasure to be participating in FOP research community. And actually, it's uh, Dr. Kwang Ping Gao and Dr. Chun Shi and myself. So we are gene therapists as well as a skeletal biologists. We teamed up in UMass Medical School to develop a new gene therapy for skeletal rare diseases. As you know, the, because gene therapy can directly correct a genetic mutation in rare disease patients, the gene therapy is an ideal approach to cure various uh, rare disease with monogenic mutation. Monogenic mutation means one gene has a problem. For patients with autosomal dominant mutation, which means a one protein is hyperactivated, so like FOP. 
So we can use uh, gene replacement technology and we can remove that problem gene and then we can put it back to normal protein. However, to make this all work, we actually need is a good delivery system. So our UMass research team so recently developed a new virus. This is a viral uh, vector can deliver our machinery, uh, gene therapy machinery to the skeleton or heterotopic bone in the muscle. So with the support of uh, IFOPA grant, so uh, we generated uh, this uh, new AV vector. And then using this AV vector, so we can test whether our AV vector actually can cure uh, FOP mouse model and FOP uh, the cells. Wonderful. Dr. Shore, you have been studying FOP for an amazing 29 years. Would you mind sharing with us what is exciting to you about gene therapy for FOP? The longer I work on uh, FOP, uh, the more we have understood FOP, what, uh, what causes it. I've come to the realization how uh, complex and complicated a disease uh, FOP is. When we think about what might be the most effective clinical treatments, uh, simple and straightforward is probably always the best. And gene therapy is an amazing approach that allows us to directly target the mutation and gives us uh, just a really wonderful opportunity to uh, be extremely targeted and extremely specific. That doesn't mean that simple is easy, but uh, it's really, really exciting to see how far the gene th therapy field has become. Uh, and how now we can really think that we have a, a, a wonderful opportunity to use this approach. And it's really, really exciting. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Levy, you established an FOP lab at the University of Michigan and then recently moved to the University of Texas Southwestern. First, thank you for playing this important role in growing FOP research by establishing another lab. We thank you for that. Can you address the important role of collaboration and forming partnerships between FOP scientists and scientists who have expertise in gene therapy? Thank you so much, Betsy. You know, collaboration, connection, and, and communication really are uh, something that we've put a huge emphasis on in our laboratory and I think is the key to any successful team. Um, you know, For us, we started studying a process that's heterotopic ossification in trauma patients. Uh, as a trauma burn and critical care surgeon in around the 2013, we were starting to see an increased number of people coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan with severe injuries that were, were developing heterotopic ossification. When I was initiating our lab, we tried to understand what were the key pathways to prevent and prophylax against this process. During this uh, line of study, I had the opportunity to be introduced to Dr. Yuji Mishina, who was one of the first scientists to develop a mouse model for FOP. And this kicked off a, a robust and productive collaboration that eventually connected me to Betsy, to the International FOP Association, to Dr. Shore and Kaplan, and getting to know people in that community, uh, getting to know the families and, and people living with FOP has really been one of the most rewarding and inspiring parts of my career. Their determination really does inspire all of us in the lab on a daily basis to advance the science and the pace of discovery. We know the importance of diversity and that having a diverse team is really what you need when you have a complex problem like this. My lab may have expertise in inflammation and matrix biology and bioinformatics. We don't have all the answers and all the expertise. And so bringing together groups with expertise in, in gene therapy and FOP is really you know, what's needed to, to move the field forward. Amazing, thank you. Dr. Shore, gene therapy is a tough field. Can you talk about the importance of taking this step now and a little bit about why science is about taking risks? The biggest leaps forward happen when we take risks. If we always stick to you know, the, the safe pathway, um, we make incremental progress. 
but it's it's the risks that really allow us to jump forward, to to leap forward. And FOP um, has waited long enough. I think you know leaps forward are where we want to be. Um, you can you can even think that uh, maybe all of FOP research has been a risk. Um, I remember back 29 years ago when I started working with with Fred Kaplan, and the most frequent question we would get is why? Why waste your time on such a rare disease? You know, you, uh, the chances are you're never going to find what the genetic mutation is. It's too hard, but it was worth the risk. It was worth our time, our energy, and, and it's paid off. We've identified the gene mutation and that set us, you know, light years ahead. It just really uh, jumped the field forward. And uh, I think gene therapy has um, similar kinds of big opportunities in the, in the clinical realm. It's, uh, it's really exciting to see that we're at this point. Wow, those were great words. <laughs> Thank you all for sharing your perspective on this exciting journey in FOP research. We in the FOP community are grateful for the work that you do every day to make a difference for patients and families. Thank you. All the work that we do at the end of the day is for families affected by FOP. Families like the Autos, who, along with the Wallaces, are co-chairing this campaign. Here is their story. My name is Sienna and I am 10 years old. I like to hunt for rocks and shells and I have found quite a lot of surprises. Wow! When I was diagnosed with FOP, I was two. When Sienna was diagnosed, we were really just um, completely devastated. You know, all the dreams that we had had for her future just felt like they had been really crushed. But then we looked at Sienna and she was the same Sienna. And so we realized, you know, we wanted to fight and make sure that she could have whatever future she dreamed of. Sometimes I give a class talk. So you know how no two snowflakes are alike? It's like no two people are alike. One day she casually said, Mom, it felt like something was stuck in my shirt today. I just can't get comfortable. And we looked at it and we just immediately knew. It turned into a huge flare up in her left shoulder. It took away her ability to change her shirt on her own and her ability to raise her hand in class and to do her own hair. Living with FOP is, is pretty challenging. It's like I want to be able to do things, but then I can't. It's a little unfair that my mom yells at me a little bit more than my brother for running. There are many challenges as a parent raising a child with FOP. There's the fear and uncertainty of not knowing when it will strike next and flare up next. And then there's the comparison to other children, watching her friends and cousins gain independence as they grow up while she's losing it. They try not to compare, but it's really hard not to. When I grow up, I either want to be an artist or a scientist or a baker or some of all of them. When I'm doing science, I think of all the scientists who are learning about FOP. A cure for Sienna would mean she could have whatever future she dreams of. I do feel like scientists are getting closer to finding a cure. It makes me feel very happy because being able to run would feel pretty great. I'm Roy Yado. Um, like all mothers of children with FOP, I've dreamed that research could one day lead to safe and effective treatments for this devastating condition. I'm so honored to be a co-chair with my husband, Eric, of the In Pursuit of a Cure campaign, because we know it's only through support of cutting-edge research that our dreams will come true. And we're not alone. Joining me right now are three other parents of children living with FOP to talk about why this campaign is important to them. Eric, Moira, and Chris, could you each introduce yourself and tell us how old your child was when they were diagnosed and how old they are now? My name is Eric Klein from Columbus, Ohio. My daughter is Elysia Klein. She is 15 and a half. She was diagnosed at four years old. My name is Moira Lilliestrom. 
Uh, my son with FOP is Manuel. He is now 23 and he was diagnosed when he was four years old. We live in Buenos Aires, Argentina. My name is Chris Bedford Gay. I am from the UK. And my eldest of three boys, Oliver, who is now aged 12, was diagnosed with FOP just after his first birthday. Oh, thank you. A critical piece of the IFOPA's In Pursuit of a Cure campaign is funding the first ever research grant in gene therapy for FOP. Can you each tell me what you think about the IFOPA embarking on this exciting but challenging new journey? The FOP um, research in the gene therapy is very exciting. When we first met Dr. Kaplan out there at Penn University, um, he brought up the thought of gene therapy way back then because it was right after they found the gene. And now that we're here now, at 10 years later, 11 years later, um, it's really exciting. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. I think that while opening gene therapy as a new road in FOP research, the IFOPA is building a major new possible treatment options for the future. While I am really hopeful in the success of the clinical trials going on, by keeping on promoting new options, we may be improving the chances of addressing the complete FOP complexity. For a patient organization, for such a small number of people and such a rare condition to be in a position to start research into gene therapy is unbelievably exciting. Obviously, nothing is ever guaranteed. But if you don't try these things and don't start them early enough, these things won't happen. Great point, all of you. So we can only take this bold step with help from the worldwide FOP community. Why do you think this cause is so worthy of support? I think it's important that the IFOPA takes this step and, and takes it as a worldwide step because we're not trying to cure or treat FOP for any one person, any one group, any one individual, it is for everybody. So everybody should be involved in such a critical and exciting step. It's also really important that we do this collaboratively and together, because if we don't, who else is going to do this at this point in time? If we can start it now and start it together, we get a good running start. It uh, increases the likelihood of us uh, achieving our goals. Knowing what a long road this is, the time to start is today. Like We can't delay starting knowing how long this research is going to take. And with any of these things, there is never a guarantee. But you have to try. If you don't try, it's a guaranteed failure. And the sooner you start this stuff, the sooner you get there. It's a marathon, not a sprint. We haven't finished the race, but we're all in it together. It's just a big mass of just people trying different angles to get to the same end line. We know that research and to have uh, safe um, treatments takes a lot of time. And I think that the best for us is to have several different options for the future. And that we need to start now to have something in the future. Because we're starting this doesn't mean that everything else is stopping. Everything else has to continue as well. This is us throwing as much at this as possible. It all has to continue. It's all equally as important as equally as critical. Thank you so much for your time today and for sharing your family's perspectives. I'm so excited to be at this point where we have several promising treatments in or about to enter clinical trials and that gene therapy is something that we can begin pursuing. My dream of the day that health and mobility are no longer concerns holding back the dreams of any of our children. Hello, I'm Christy Gonzalez. As president of the board of the IFOPA and the mother of a child with FOP, I'm so grateful to our FOP families, donors, and research partners for bringing us to this moment. None of the incredible progress we've made in FOP research, identification of the FOP gene, and the development of potential treatments would have been possible without the dedication of our community. We've come so far, and now we're ready to take the next step together in search of a treatment and a cure. 
We know this road will be long and there's no guarantees of success. Every new project is a test, but if research fails, those failures lead us to new and different paths. We must leave no stone unturned and no avenue unexplored. Those living with FOP are depending on all of us to support this campaign. I dream of playing soccer with my sister. I dream of being able to ride a bike. I dream of living at a lake house with my cousins. I dream of running when I want. I dream of playing sports. I dream of jumping on a trampoline. I dream of having independence. I dream of skiing. I dream of having no more pain. I dream of doing cartwheels with my friends. I dream of becoming a pilot. I dream of doing gymnastics. I dream of rock climbing. I dream of pushing my own hair. I dream of dressing myself. I dream of a world without FOP. Without FOP. Without FOP. The IFOPA has a plan to make my dreams come true. You can help. The IFOPA is in pursuit of a cure. FOP research can transform my future. Dear Derry, we could change my life. Will you join us? Please give so that I can play sports. So I can play basketball. So I can be independent. So I can run and play. So I can ride a bike. So I can play sports. So I can be more active. So I can type with two hands. Please give so I don't have to worry about my phone. So I can keep moving. So I can have a teacher. So I'm not afraid. Please give so we have hope. Please do so that our IS, ISOPA and may our dream come true. We dream of a world without FOP too. And we hope you'll join us on the journey to make all of our dreams come true. To donate or make a gift in someone's honor, visit ifopa.org slash curefop. That's also where you'll be able to watch this presentation again and share it with your friends and family. Thank you for joining us in pursuit of a cure.